Good morning, Australia! Welcome to The Scoop with me, Darren! And me, Will. Oh, oh, oh. Now let's get right into it with my fascinating segment, Darren's Dialogue Box! <laughs> This week, I thought we might ponder the fate of the Electronic Entertainment Expo, otherwise known as E3. E3 has long occupied a rather important place on the gaming news calendar as the global home of video game announcements. But this year, things will be a little different, with both PlayStation and Electronic Arts opting not to hold press conferences at the convention itself. So. With no PlayStation, no EA, and with Nintendo already in the habit of doing an online-only presentation, could this be the beginning of the end of E3 as we know it? The end of E3? It's such a hard thing to imagine, Darren. I look forward to it every year, and I'm sure so many other games journalists do as well. Hmm. But putting less importance on E3 might not be so bad. Maybe this will mean we'll start getting big announcements whenever they're ready to be announced. Perhaps more news at different events, or the constant possibility of surprise gaming news at any time. <laughs> I guess we'll just have to wait and see what this year's E3 actually ends up being like. It'll certainly be very different. Affirmative. Now, speaking of gaming conferences, the Game Developers Conference, or GDC, took place recently in San Francisco. Some of the big news to emerge was the announcement of Google Stadia, Google's new game streaming platform. Mm. The service is said to be accessible via televisions, mobile devices, PCs and laptops, all without the need of any gaming console hardware. There will also be the option for gamers to use a new Stadia controller. What do you think of Google's gaming gambit, Will? Will it become a main stadia of the games industry? <laughs> well, it's pretty big news to see a major new challenger enter the gaming arena. But it's too early to tell how it will all play out, literally. Plus, I've always been a little apprehensive about the idea of a completely streaming-based game service. Connection lag is no joke, Darren. Bad internet might mean some games just don't work. Mm, a fair point. We may be waiting a while before we see it arrive in Australia anyhow. Stadia is launching first in the US, Canada, Europe and the UK. Oh, and speaking of the UK, did you hear that Aussie-developed mobile game Florence has received a whopping six nominations across the game categories of the BAFTA Awards? That's the awards from the British Academy of Film and Television Arts. Wow, go Team Mountains from Melbourne. It's great to see Florence getting a very British tip of the old hat in it, Governor. Certainly is, Governor. <laughs> now then, now then. <clears throat> uh, in other news, we have confirmation that a new Sonic game is in development. The head of Sonic Team made the announcement a few weeks ago that the next big title in the mainline Sonic series is underway. Yes, it's exciting to know that it's happening, even though there were no other details given. Hopefully, development goes fast. Ah, affirmative. And now, for the Extra Scoop! <laughs> what have you got for us, Will? Well, Darren, I've been messing around with this little website called Noclip. It allows you to fly around exploring levels from a bunch of old Nintendo games. There's Super Mario Galaxy, Banjo-Kazooie, Ocarina of Time, Mario Kart and a heap more. It's fun to get a bird's eye view on some of these great level designs. Splendid. Oh, uh, what was that, Boatmeal? <laughs> oh, classic Boatmeal. He said, bird's eye view? What about a dog's eye view? <laughs> uh, uh, wouldn't that be black and white, though? Oh, anyway, I think that's all the time we have for this week. Until our next scoop, cheerio, Australia. <laughs> Wave to the audience, Will. They are a great audience. Oh, so loyal, so loyal. Under pain of lasering.